Yeah, thanks for coming to my talk. Um, I would like to give you a bit of an overview of um, the system that we've been building at GoodX. GoodX is the name of the company. Um, and me, Don, and my co-founder, Matt, um, have formed that and are working now on uh, what we call impact markets, um, which is basically a system that we want to use to try to streamline the grant making in EA and specifically co uh, like coordinate donors a lot better. And I'll get go into more detail like what I mean by that. But first, um, like what is the problem that we're facing? <clears throat> the problem is that worldwide there are a plethora of charity entrepreneurs that want to do good in the world in some fashion, but they need some enabling usually. And um, these Charity entrepreneurs are like globally distributed in various different countries. Uh, they speak a lot of different languages. Um, they are uh, still largely unaware of EA, I think. And um, the contexts in which they are working are often un intransparent to outsiders. So I have some examples on the next slide um, where the context is intransparent um, because uh, they are like very specific academic topics. Um, but um, there are also like cultural contexts to take into account and historical contexts in which uh, all sorts of interventions stand. that are also n opaque to uh, outsiders to that space or to any given space. Here are a few examples of that, like the first one, strategic implications of credibility and commitment is taken from the research agenda of the Center on Long-Term Risk. And as it happens, that's a research agenda that I think tackles pretty much the most important problem <laughs> that we are facing, I think. Um, but like from just the sentence, uh, strategic implications of credibility and commitment, that could be a bit opaque and uh, yeah, like not very obvious to most people. And um, these uh, charity entrepreneurs are not only hard to like recognize and identify, but um, they are also, well, these points are connected, um, underfunded. This is just like one example. Um, these, uh, this is a graph of um, the grant payouts um, made by OpenFill, or the public ones anyway. And um, the uh, X uh, axis is uh, logarithmic, so you can see that there is there are lots of grants paid out uh, between uh, ten thousand dollars and five million dollars, and of course, like if you multiply the number of grants, which is the Y axis, with the amount, then uh, this is not going to be uh, quite that bell shape um, in the actual payout amounts. But this is the number of payouts. Um, there are also a bunch of payouts at around fifty thousand uh, dollars, but below that, it drops off quite quickly. And um, that means that well, there are some uh, projects, of course, that get funded in this lower area. But these are probably the projects where OpenFill already has a lot of context. Otherwise, um, for all large grant makers, it quickly uh, becomes like not worth it to review very small projects, like if they have to spend a uh, hundred thousand uh, dollars uh, in time on reviewing a project. Um, or in reviewing several projects only to recommend one of them, and this has an, a funding gap of $10,000, then it doesn't make sense for them, doesn't make any economic sense for them to do all of that work instead of just like throwing the money out randomly, or <laughs> that's probably not the actual alternative. Um, so uh, that is why we think that there is this gap between um, almost zero and uh, 50000 or maybe $100,000 uh, in project sizes relatively underfunded. So how do we hope to solve that? As I mentioned, we hope to coordinate donors better so that uh, donors of all sizes, be it like $100 per year or $100,000 per year, um, can coordinate better and can help fill these funding gaps, all these small funding gaps, more efficiently. Uh, donors, uh, conveniently, are distributed all around the world. Uh, this is just one example, the giving what we can data, all the pledge takers, they are distributed around almost 100 countries in the world. I don't know why they just don't just pay someone from some other countries to make the 100 full. Uh, <laughs> I would do that. Um, and um, they, like, this is just completely made up graph. Um, but... Uh, 
they sort of form, or in my mind, looks sort of like this graph on the left here, um, where you have some clusters that are really well connected to funders, like some of these nodes are funders, some of them are, um, uh, are charity entrepreneurs, like generally anyone who's necessary uh, for a project to come to fruition. And uh, there are some clusters here that are really well connected where projects can start uh, happening. There are some clusters that have some interconnections um, and uh, maybe some uh, small scale projects can come off the ground, but um, they are not as well connected as we'd hope. Um, and then, of course, there are lots of individual um, charity entrepreneurs that don't have anyone else to help them, and these projects are probably not going off to getting off the ground. And we would like to move from that um, system to a more interconnected system and um, make it possible for uh, all sorts of people who are not as well connected as people who are like directly in the networks of large funders, any large funders, um, to also get access to funding. And um, there is one very convenient feature of donors, uh, is that they come in very different like colors, is how I, how I visualize this here. Um, so there are those blue donors over here that are in earning to give, and so basically spend most of their time uh, like uh, yeah, full-time work in like quant finance or something. And so they have very little time left to allocate their donations. Um, then on the very end, other end, on the red end of the spectrum, there are the donors who are actually like working in jobs that are directly relevant to the donation allocation. So they can use the knowledge that they use in their jobs all the time to also allocate their donations to the best projects that they are aware of. And um, these project, uh, these donors on the red side are of course very specialized in the lo 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 the knowledge that they have. Um, and uh, in between, there are various donors that are sort of yeah, in the yellowish uh, area in between the two. And they um, spend a lot of time on their full-time jobs, but they're also like friends with uh, researchers in relevant fields, or maybe they are flatmates with them, uh, so that they also absorb a bit of the knowledge um, of what is important in the fields. And uh, importantly, I also have this knowledge that they know some researcher that they really trust because they've chosen to live together with that person and know them really well. And this is, uh, these are all sorts of examples of local knowledge that um, the people on the red and yellowish side have to some extent, uh, but the people on the blue side lack. And we would like to bridge this gap between them so that this knowledge can flow freely between them and uh, the people who can spend a lot of time has a very have a very efficient way to draw on the knowledge of the people who uh, do have the time. So how does our system work? Um, we have introduced something, um, like we have a platform that's impactmarkets.io and there there is a score and the score works the way that it takes into account the earliness of a donation, so how much information a donor adds to the platform by maybe bringing a, pl uh, bringing a project onto the platform in the first place and then uh, donating to the platform and really like uh, ex expressing their commitment and their trust into that project. Um, this is the, the earliness, then the level of confidence, so the, the proxy that we're using is the donation amount. And um, then there is the project success. So when a project is completed or at least produces some outputs, maybe like an annual review or something with all the papers that the think tank has published, then we want to review those. and. Um, then set a, a project score, or perhaps we have several reviews, and then we average or take a median over those, and um, that determines the project, uh, sc uh, yeah, the project score in the end, the level of project success. Um, uh, would you mind asking afterwards? Uh, okay, great. <laughs> then better like overview of the time. Um, then. Um, when donors do this repeatedly and they uh, donate to lots of projects early on um, that they think are very successful and maybe in many cases they're right and the projects are actually successful, um, then their donor score increases and that means that the, the donors that are most successful on this and that have made the best donations and registered the best donations on our platform are at the top of our top donor ranking. and. Um, 
if people actually have the ambition to try to raise to those top ranks, then we have the special term Project Scout for them. They are out scouting out the most promising projects there are and try to bring them onto the platform or donate to them if they're already on the platform uh, in order to rise in the ranks. And this is now where all the other donors come in. So all the donors on the blue side that can't spend a lot of time can just look at the top list, for example, and see there that, um, like, uh, there are, uh, like, top th the top three or so are maybe two people that they don't know and um, slightly different values, but then uh, maybe the fourth donor on the list or something is someone that they actually identify with. And um, then they can check, like, who, uh, like, what projects this person has donated to and um, then can just follow up those donations. They trust the track record of that uh, project scout. And um, based on that track record and based on the shared values that they have with this person, they just follow that person's donation and top them up. Um, like whatever project that person is currently donating to that is still ongoing, uh, still accepting new donations. Um, and they have another um, option. Um, with the list of all projects uh, can also be sorted um, by the support that the projects have received. In the end, this will be take the weight of the donor score into account so that the projects that have had the most top donor buy-in can be at the top. And then donors can also select the projects that have had the top, uh, the, the most buy-in from top donors and go through those and see which projects they want to donate to. And this then um, solves this problem where like friends of mine, for example, want to donate in the AI safety space, but they don't have, an, uh, have a charity evaluator in the AI safety space. So they're completely lost. They don't know where to put their donations. And um, as a result, they mostly like donate to uh, the animal charity evaluators, the top charity or give all top charity or something, uh, but not in AI safety or in any other field that doesn't have a charity evaluator for that matter. Um, and um, yeah, so now once this is really working and we have enough donor scouts on the platform and we have enough projects on the platform, um, that they can just come in, do this, and allocate their donations very efficiently to promising startup projects or early stage projects. The way that um, our algorithm works is in a bit more detail that um, there are here these, these two example projects, Project Antiviral Algae and Project Rain, Rainwater Refinement. And um, there are three donors each. And um, these donors have a large share in this um, abstract thing that is a project on our platform in the end. In the case of uh, Alex, because Alex donated so early, and in the case of Ash, uh, because Ash donated so much. And um, Avery falls in between, same, uh, same general uh, pattern with the Project Rainwater Refinement. Then in the end, the scores are assigned, and here uh, the antiviral algae uh, score better, but only by a factor of two. And then all of this gets added up. In this case, no one has donated to two projects, which makes the math a bit easier. Um, all of this gets added up, and then it turns out that Ash is actually at the top. Um, having made this really big donation here and uh, to a project that actually received a great uh, retroactive assessment. And um, then there are also like some uh, surprising orderings there, like Avery relatively far down, even though Avery um, donated to the better project, as it were, but the donation was a bit later and a bit smaller. So Avery received a smaller score overall. Now, uh, our roadmap has three phases. Two are pictured here, but there's also like the secret third phase. And um, the first uh, phase is about this score that I just introduced. So um, we're really trying to make it legible to donors that don't want to spend a lot of time on their research, what the top projects are and what the top like grant makers or regranters are. Uh, in phase two, we want to introduce something that uh, we'll probably call impact mark or impact credit that can be paid out to those um, top donors uh, in proportion to their score so that um, there is like some sort of play money currency on our platform that can be used for all sorts of things. We have, for example, a bounty platform where we hope to use it and um, they can also like stake those uh, amounts on projects then uh, and that could for example allow them to use the the impact credits that they have to incentivize further donations from other project scouts to those projects 
um, and that's even out like the how rich they are. So because the algorithm has this feature that it takes the size of a donation into account, we want to like even this out a bit and give an edge to people who have a higher uh, impact credit, have more impact credits than they have money. Um, yeah, the third phase is one that I want to elide a bit more here. That's uh, about when we want to bridge the gap to for-profit investors and basically pull for-profit investors in as well as uh, project scouts, as it were. The current challenges that we're facing. So. First of all, we're looking for more project scouts, so people who all really want to put some research into this and um, try to leverage the donations of all these other donors that uh, want to rely on them, basically become sort of organic re-granters for other donors. Um, we need more of those, so if you're interested in doing that, then um, of course uh, try to find cool projects, donate to them, register them on the platform, um, but you can also import your historical donations. So if you have done some really cool donations that you're proud of, um, you can um, ask that project whether you can import it to the platform and then import your, register your donations to this platform, and if there are a lot of donations then I can also help you with that, I can just uh, import it directly to the database. Um, yeah, the incentives, of course, to leverage the donations of um, all these other donors that rely on these recommendations, um, which will hopefully happen uh, to the extent that uh, the donor is able to build up a tr strong track record. Um, one thing that is very important for us is to set the incentive for these uh, project scouts. So um, please scan this uh, QR code or go to the address uh, bit.ly slash donor hyphen interest um, in order to uh, register your interest, if any, in using the platform to allocate your donations. I'll ask you for like whether you want to enter your name or something and also ask you for your usual donation budget. And um, then we can use this as an incentive for more project scouts to join. We've, for example, recently posted on the EA forum that we have now collected uh, expressions of interest to the tune of $250,000 from people who want to use the platform to inform their donations. And $250,000 is now hopefully an incentive for some project scouts to come in and try to um, get some of that for the awesome projects that they think they can identify. Um, yeah, so please scan that and uh, take a note of the address. I'll hopefully also leave this open during the Q&A. And um, then we are also a Delaware Public Benefit Corporation and we're fundraising. So uh, if any of you is a business angel or uh, knows someone, then we'd be very interested in uh, figuring out whether we can make a safe contract or something. That, uh, concludes this little overview and I can probably transition to the Q&A. That's the address of the platform. It's all up and running. It's just waiting for more users to make it more useful. <laughs> hmm. uh, so how exactly do you calculate uh, earliness? How do we calculate what? Uh, earliness. When, uh, when evaluating uh, uh, donors? It's only the order of the donations. So the second, the degree to which the second one uh, increases the total funding of the project. So if the project starts out with $100 and someone donates $100, it has a 2x effect, but afterwards $100 only has a 1.3 effect or something. Hmm. So it's like logarithmic discounting, uh, exponential discounting uh, over those? Like yeah, 1.5 is what I meant. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask whether you were able to interview the top donors to ask on what basis if they should uh, causes they uh, donated to, so you like know what's behind the, the best donors. Um, you mean like whether you as donor uh, will later be able well, to? For example, that? you have three top donors somewhere, and. Uh, now people are like using donors to know where to donate to, from what I understood. But do you know why donors chose those chari charities to donate to? Um. Yeah, at the moment we don't have the data yet, so we're just still uh, trying to get donors onto the platform, but then there are like two features. One of them already exists, the other one's in planning. 
um, when someone makes a donation, uh, like on their profile, first of all, people enter their values. So um, you can get a bit of an overview of why someone would donate in the general field that they're donating. But um, one feature that we also want to build out are comments that are tied to donations so that people can enter their reasoning behind a donation. And then, um, yeah, you can look up like the name of the person and uh, see what their reasoning was with that particular donation. Oh yeah, and I forgot to repeat the question. So uh, your question <laughs> was um, uh, how we uh, calculate the earliness of donations, which is just taking the order into account. And uh, your question was about like how um, a donor can know the reasoning behind a top donor's donation. All right, any more questions? Yes. Uh, maybe, sorry, that's quite technical, but maybe on this point 3A, because I'm familiar with co companies in co incorporated in Delaware, uh, and basically I know how they are using business. But what is the advantage of having a public benefit corporation in Delaware? <laughs> I mean, pro probably from the point of view of donor, yeah? So, is there any or you just chose the Delaware because it's quite convenient and easy to manage, so? <laughs> the second, yeah, exactly. We wanted to start a non-profit, but that is complicated, so we figured let's go with a... PBC instead. <laughs> Gladly. Uh, forgot to repeat the question again. The question was like why we chose the Delaware Public Benefit Corporation. <laughs> All right, no more questions? Huh? Oh, no? <laughs> okay. oh. oh, yes. See, like whether the top donors uh, overlap with the predictions of other organizations, like Keep Well or something uh, similar. The question is whether like top donors make similar uh, predictions or investment decisions as uh, established charity evaluators like Give Well, and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, like at the moment, we can't see that because we're just getting started. Hopefully, we can observe something like that in the long run. But some, one fundamental problem is probably going to be that uh, we have this focus on a much smaller scale. So we will, uh, like our donors, will probably support these projects when they can absorb some one thousand, ten thousand, fifty thousand uh, dollars per year, and um, then give well will probably get interested when they can absorb some five hundred to a million dollars per year or something. And there's going to be like a lot of time in between before you can make this. Uh, judgment because even if the organization survives for that long and grows to that size, um, that'll take time. Oh, we only have one minute left. I can't possibly answer all of those questions in one minute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>